When you're working on a dream, at some point in time, a transition takes place. And the transition is, is what you are becoming in pursuit of the dream. Because even if you don't get the dream, you become such a strong and powerful person, it will so change your life, you can look at something else and say, well, I think I'll go do this then. Because you've now developed yourself in such confidence and such competence in how to deal in the arena of life that you can move into another area and not miss a beat. Once you begin to discover who you are, then you really realize how you have been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth, including all the dimensions of your life. But you can only do that through the struggle of life. And most people avoid the struggle. Most people go through life avoiding pain. And when you go through life like that, something in you dies. Something in you that you never activate is lying dormant in there. That you never get a chance to call on because you have not challenged yourself. Somebody said, the land of familiarity belongs to the dead. That most people like to feel like they're a king in the area of their comfort zone. They only want to do those things that they know how to do well. Osborne said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. So if you want to begin to grow, you've got to put something out here that you can't reach easily, that has got to make you stretch, got to make you jump for it, got to make you get back a little bit and dig in so that you can take a leap for it. And maybe you jump up there and you miss it and you skin your knees and you come back again and you bust your lip next time. But you keep on and through that process, you learn how to leap higher. You start challenging yourself to dig deeper. And then you discover some things about you that you don't know right now. Some talents that you have in you that you didn't know that you can do. I started out just talking to kids. And now I'm speaking at corporations. Now I'm traveling. I didn't know I can do this, but had I not given myself a chance. And I'm saying to you, give yourself a chance. Here's something else. If you want to begin to make your stuff happen for you, I think that it's very important that you start trusting yourself. Listen to yourself. Listen to that still small voice within you. Don't try and make everything logical. There's some things about life that defies logic, that you just can't explain how the outcome is going to be. I think that's why Paul said you've got to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. That once you begin to trust yourself, in your ideas, in your instincts, life takes on a whole new meaning because now I want you to do that feeling that you are led. Just feel, I am led. And don't give your power away. You don't need anybody to approve your dream. It was given to you. If they can't see it, it's because it wasn't given to them. It was given to you. Hold it, nourish it, cultivate it, work on it. It's yours, it's your baby work on it until it comes into fruition i gave away my power and i said i'm not going to do that no more here's something else for those who make it today do what you know is right treat people like you want to be treated don't try and take any shortcuts don't try and cheat pay your dues up front i believe ladies and gentlemen what goes around comes around you can pay now, or you will pay double later. So, do the right thing. There might be a tendency sometimes, because of the negative part of our consciousness and our own programming, for us to want to say, well, I just do it this time. It won't matter. Won't nobody know. Ladies and gentlemen, everything matters. And you know you're somebody. You know. I'd rather lose out on my dream doing the right thing than the cheat trying to make a shortcut to get to my goal. I want to be able to look myself in the mirror. And that's what you want to do. There's no saying, judge a man not by what he does, but by that that he doesn't have to do. And to judge the true quality of a man is what do you do when nobody's looking. See, there's some good out there for you in the universe that has your name on it. And nobody can get your good. It has your name on it. They can't take your stuff. It's your stuff. So when you know that, when you know that whatever you're seeking, it's also seeking you. You don't worry. You don't run scared. You don't think somebody's going to take it from you. 
You listen to your inner voice and you always take the high road. There will be the tendency, the natural inclination to take the low road. You must resist that. Here's something else I encourage you to do if you want to make it today. Keep your agreements. Keep your agreements that you make. And establish a network of people who will also do that. Establish a network of people in your life that you can count on. That will be there for you when you need them. And you be there for them. Leave the flakes alone. People that are seriously not serious. And if you're surrounded by flakes, that tells you who you are. Here's something else. Three Ps to have in your life. In working on your dream and doing your life work, you must be patient, persistent, and positive no matter what. Be positive no matter what. Because when you are negative, ladies and gentlemen, you're sending out negative energy and you're blocking your good. So don't send out any negative energy. Don't take it personal. See, a lot of people have an idea or a dream and they give up on it. No, no, don't do that. Work your dream until it gets hot. See, most things don't happen as soon as we think they should happen. The messenger of misery might drop in on you and say hello. Murphy's Law might come by and thump you on the head. Any number of things can happen to interrupt your flow. It's okay. Don't take it personal. Just acknowledge what's going on. It's called life. And keep on working on your dream. Continue to keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. Because this is your life. This is what you love. This is your passion. Step back. Don't judge it. If you judge it, judge not yet. Let she be judged. Why? Because when you judge it, you invest emotion in it. And that emotion could be anger. And guess what? That hurts you. That doesn't hurt anybody else. So what do you want to take yourself out early for by internalizing things? Shakespeare said, nothing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. So judge not according to appearances, but write judgment and feel that everything is going to work out for you because you're patient, you're persistent, and you're going to be positive no matter what. Don't allow other things or people or circumstances to determine what your reaction is going to be. So don't allow people to determine how you are going to respond to them or circumstances. Learn to look at it. Look at your life right now. If you want to keep on getting what you're getting, keep on doing what you're doing. You've got to be willing to change your ways. Your life is working. If you don't like what you have produced, you're a director, you are the star, you wrote this script. You produce this, whatever it is. If it's a hit, you produced it. If it's a flop, you produced it. Take ownership of it and decide to go back to the drawing board and rewrite the script that you are the star of. You have the power to do that. On this day, you can declare that I'm going to change. As you look back on your life, you can decide that I don't like what I produced here and I want higher ground. I want to begin to experience more love. I want to have more adventure in my life. I want something that gives my life a sense of meaning. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, if we can accept the possibility of that this is the decade of consciousness, that's what I believe that this is, the decade of consciousness, if you please, a time where we can begin to create in folks' minds the idea, the possibility that we can create a more humane society, the possibility that we can create more love, communication, and understanding in relationships, the possibility that we can create a drug-free America, the possibility that we can create the kind of respect for diversity and difference in our multicultural society, the possibility that we can begin to develop the mindset to bring out the best in people, to encourage them to achieve their greatness and support them in their dreams, that if we can, in this decade of consciousness, to begin to see and envision that happening and that we all can play a role. That we were born for such a time as this. That we showed up for this. That we survived one out of nine million sperms and we have been chosen for this great work. What an exciting time to be alive.